to the Warhammer Skull Showcase 2021 Humidus Edition Analysis with Hammer and Death. Oh boy. We have been slapped with so much goodness in Warhammer terms lately. I don't even know. Indeed. <laughs> I don't know where to begin even. Well, we can just <laughs> get right at it. I mean, it's a fucking huge chunk to cover, so I think we'll just kind of start off. I mean, uh, yeah, we were hit with um, the showcase um, a couple of days ago, and um, it was massive. Yeah, 30 minutes, I think it was. Like, that's mm. uh, that's a lot of warmer content at once, but then... I guess though some of it is or like were titles that have been released already. There was a good chunk of new stuff here too. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just start off with the first uh, title in the showcase, which is um, the Silence and Fury, and uh, that is like a, an expansion for Total War War yeah. Two. Yeah. What do you think about this? Um, I thought the trailer was cool. I haven't really touched much upon. I haven't played Total War Warmer Two much. Because um, I mostly got it for uh, to play multiplayer co-op, uh, but then yeah. for some reason we had a lot of issues with um, with latency and stuff like that with it. So, oh, you did? Yeah, uh, in the multiplayer. But then of course I played with a friend in Indonesia, so that might have something oh, okay. to do with it. Yeah, um, probably. But that 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 Sphinx just didn't want to do anything I told it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a problem playing live game like that yeah but um i thought the heroes looks uh, looked cool though the lords i mean i'm, I'm sure it's gonna be some uh, beast men on lizard men action here <sighs> can you imagine anything better it's the like the meeting it's the clash of the furries versus the scalies <laughs> imagine Cats like and... how nasty like beast men furry porn would be oh no yeah i mean that's the these things show up in all those like, on Steam when you see those like um, those hentai RPGs. <laughs> are we going? Are we going back in? <laughs> are we know, going back in? Just like it felt like a natural development. <laughs> yeah. Oh, degeneracy! Oh. <laughs> it comes creeping back in. Yeah, we should have like a separate podcast just for those. <laughs> that is those the third nude Steam games. Just thirst cast all around. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> well. Uh, I think it's like it's uh, a little bit interesting, but it's soon coming to an end. It's basically the last expansion for for two, so yeah. But it's good to yeah to kind of squeeze that little last bit of juice, fun juice. Yeah, and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm. the probus the fun probuscus produces. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, you know, uh, but but the thing is like. At least, I, I assume that if you buy this, you're gonna be able to use it in in like the the massive uh, triple game campaign that's ultimately gonna be in Wormer Three as well. So it's not like you yeah. are gonna use it for like a couple of weeks and then oh, Wormer Three is here, and then it's just like you know, at least it's uh, carryover. Yeah, yeah. And like speaking of three, that's the next game in the showcase. Mm -hmm. And it showed up Scarbrand. All right, so talk a little bit about what we got to see here in this trailer. Uh, well, it was a lot of red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very, it was very on anger. brand. Uh, Scar brand is the most on brand I've seen, like you know, a trailer I've seen in a while. Because yeah. uh, ultimately, he's like, I guess the strongest uh, bloodthirster under corn, and he's the the one that actually. <laughs> got manipulated by Tsinch to attack Korn, the Chaos God of Rage himself, and it's just like, hmm. Mm, good plan, good plan. <laughs> it's a, it's a, very, it's good a very good plan. Uh, so, you know, he attacked for zero damage and got choked so hard that he lost his personality. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like when in Final Fantasy, if you like, uh, kind of discover absolute end game boss that's even like after the canonical story end game boss yeah and you're like way under leveled and you're just like oh what is this what is this fucking sphere doing here out in the desert yeah yeah and then <laughs> then you're just completely <laughs> annihilated <laughs> yeah it, it's like it, it's kind of like uh, going for the ruby omega weapon at the at like level 40 or something 
yeah yeah you're like oh what's that like something in the in the sand here i have like 2000 hp i could probably take it yeah and you like your first three swings are like dodge or zero damage or something like that (laughs) exactly okay that's not good that's not good Kind of like what King, uh, what Miles Morales punches did to Kingpin in uh, Into the yeah. Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kingpin. Oh, the memes. Yeah. Well, um, Warhammer uh, Total War Three is um, it's shaping up. It is shaping up. I mean, I'm getting a little bit more hype now. There was some criticism about Kislev being a little bit too Barry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Too much focus on the yeah. Actually, people, you know, people criticized almost that they're you know overdone it. Ah, even though yeah, that yeah, is yeah. you know it is like very canon. It's for his love to be like bear riders and bear, bear bear people. But <laughs> the care bears. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that that they overdid it a little bit, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, may, uh, all right. I can kind of see that. I guess. But people need to be critical. Yeah, uh, but I'm I'm to be honest though about Warhammer Three, I'm more uh, I'm the most hyped about having individual factions for the the, the different Chaos Gods. That's what I'm yeah, really hyped yeah. about. Because my boy Tsinch, my boy Nurgle, my Slanesh, yeah, uh, yeah. your my, my, <laughs> what my kind boy of Ford. You... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Slanesh is a little bit hard. He's like he's progressive, you know. That that's or, an entity that's very hard to define. Yes. Yeah. However, yeah, all you know is that Slanesh provides the entertainment. Who else can make a orgy planet and get away with it? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, can hard you fucking to beat. imagine an hard orgy to... planet, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's uh, let's lay it dead. I don't want <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that that's gonna be really cool to have like all the factions, yeah, uh, fleshed out like that. Uh, I think that that's gonna. Oh, I can't wait to play that huge campaign with everything in it, and just like that's... fester everything with Nurgle. Mm, yeah, but I hope that they're gonna add some uh, some chaos dwarfness. Uh, oh yeah, soon or later in the in the lifespan of the game. I mean, they're expansions. They're they're kind of niche, right? But the yeah. But then they look so that like their 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 whole shebang is is really cool. Yeah, I fucking love that the the kind of chaos and technology mix, you know. Yeah, I mean, they could be um and you know an add on faction later though. Yeah, I think they are a, a strong candidate, but we'll just have to see. Because, yeah, uh, I, I think they would be wise to try to, like, really incorporate all the fa- as many factions as possible. They, they've already done a good job of that, though. But uh, if you include yeah, both yeah. one and two, um, there's already a lot of factions. Right, yeah, they, they need to kind of keep some some for the DLC, you know. Yeah, understandable. Just just don't, but for the love of corn, Slanesh, Nurgle, and Siege, don't make us pay for blood again. In a warmer game, like no. just, just don't, just no, 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 no. make us have us pl- pay premium for the orgy planet. I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. That's gonna be in the the loot section on Steam. Yes, and right next to Bone Town too, and and sex with the devil. Yeah, <laughs> those are legit <laughs> titles, by the way. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez, stuff. Well, yeah, but that's uh, like a kind of home run with uh, Warhammer 3. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's call, let's not, call not it. Not the Orgy Planet game. But Warhammer uh, 3. I, I mean, Total War. that would be quite the conclusion. It, it's it's definitely the opposite it's of the, an anticlimax. It's the Orgy Planet DLC. It's the last DLC. The ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate climax. Yeah, but I guess that's more like 40k, right? The Orgy Planet. Yeah. It's more 40k. I have terror slimish. Yeah, true. True. Um, but it's supposedly in the same universe, so... Yeah. I mean... Who knows, maybe. Yeah. Well, 
Moving on, moving on. Okay, so uh, now they're cooling uh, cooling it off a bit with um, a, like a GOG. Oh no, I'm jumping. Uh, we're at Age of Sigmar. Tempest uh, Fall, right? Uh, Tempest Fall, yeah. So this is going to be a VR title. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Oculus is kind of collaborating with this. Yeah. So uh, it looks really cool. I mean, it, it does lend itself well to a kind of first person um, fantasy type game. Yeah, and it looks very RPG as well because like for example, yeah. th- this this does seem similar to Battle Sister and I recently got into VR, so Battle Sister uh, was one of those things where we're going to talk more about that later, but I had a blast with that and this essentially looks like takes the good things from that makes it into an rpg or like more rpg ish with health bars and stuff and and more gear i suppose and then make yeah. it into uh the age of sigmar universe which which is cool uh i'm just a little bit bummed um and this is going to be one of my criticisms for the um, the the later age of sigmar game on this list too which is that the an- main enemy here is the night haunt and i think they are probably the most boring out of mm-hmm. the enemies um yeah, I mean, I'm sure the faction for those who play the board game and stuff and the lore about them are, is really cool. It always is, right? But then, as enemies, they just seem like I, they're just a little bit generic. Yeah, they seem pretty generic compared to like the other things that they could have chosen instead. But hey, I'm probably yeah. gonna get it. I'm probably gonna enjoy it too. So it does remind me a little bit of Dark Messiah. <laughs> That's a good thing, though. Yeah. But I mean, we always talk about that game. Yeah, but it's such a great one. It's such like um, it's such a flawed masterpiece, kind of. It is. Know? It is a flawed masterpiece. Imagine that game uh, in VR, though. Uh, yeah, that would. I mean, like I said, this looks very similar. So I think that that would fit. You know. I just um, I got some traumatic flashbacks when I when I thought of Dark Messiah in VR because at first I was like, "Ooh, wow, that would that would be pretty sick." And then I remembered the spider level. <laughs> yeah. And um, suddenly, That'd I don't know if I... Horrible. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, horrible. that gave me the, the legit creeps, uh, you know, back in the day when I played it, played through it the first time. And when you go into that spider cave and sometimes, like, when they crawl out of the holes and stuff, and it's just like, mm. sometimes yeah. they just come up from the ledges in front of you. And there's, I don't know, it gave me the, the real heebie-jeebies. Did you ever play Turok, uh, Seeds of Evil, the Turok 2? I only watched my friend play, play part of it. Uh, I never okay. watched all of it or played all of it. That game that game had a, a serious spider level as well. Oh, yeah? Oh, or what kind of spider alien things. Yeah. You know, more <laughs> spider dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, but sure. Uh, they're still oh, creepy, right? Game. They, yeah. Oh, that's a good game. Turok. I seeds mean, of evil. Seeds of evil. Yeah, I, I always, you know what I did? I enabled cheats and I had like unlimited ammo. Yeah. And then when I, whenever I got a new weapon, it was like, yes, now I have it, you know, forever. Yeah. <laughs> and I can spam it. <laughs> oh, that was that was such a cool way to play it, and it was actually quite hard. Or uh, it was like a long game. Um, uh, I remember. I, I wasn't allowed to own it myself, so I just lent it from a from a friend. Yeah, <laughs> because it was that too sounds violent. about right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how um, I, I think this got re released as well for PC with like optimized con- uh, controls and um, it like yeah. unlimited FPS. I think that could be cool to to get into though. Do like a let's play of that. Oh uh, yeah, that would be sick. But I suck yeah, at those. So like, probably you yeah. and you have to do the gameplay. <laughs> yeah, sure, I could do it. When I mean, it should be easier on PC. Oh, uh, for sure. I mean, the sixty four didn't exactly have the best controller setup. No, and I remember that Turok three on yeah. sixty four had such a weird controller setup. I, I tried to emulate that once, and I just couldn't be comfortable with the controls. Yeah. So I just never finished it. Because that was, yeah. Uh, uh, well. Okay, back to the showcase. Uh, so, <laughs> getting off track. The next game, or the next 
game is Dark Tide, but the kind of thing here is that Dan Abnett is co-writing it, and we get a interview with him. Mm, yeah, and we get some footage. We what do you think about this stuff? I'm I'm super excited about it because Dark Tide in itself, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like um, it's kind of uh, the same as it's the 40k equivalent of Vermintide. So, which again um, is kind of like a, me a melee focused um, survival, cooperative survival for four players uh, in the vein of Left 4 Dead, and kind of like horde survival um, with like dynamic spawning hordes and uh, loot system and all these things and different classes that can that help each other and you need to stay well, like stay together and work as a team. And for Dark Tide, this takes it to 40k, makes it um, a little bit more like instead of having a mostly melee but some shooting focused, it's more 50 50. Mm. And um, you're essentially working for the Inquisition, drafted as kind of, uh, kind of like a suicide squad almost that goes in to uh, try to help the Inquisition root out a uh, chaos infestation in a hive city. And like they revealed that the the writer is Dan Abnett, and Dan Abnett is one of the most, if not the most, um, accomplished and highly regarded writer in uh, among the 40k or like the Warhammer writers, I think, like the in the novels. And he's also done, you know, he's he's written comic books. His um, his his portfolio is quite is quite established. Uh, mm. So, and he has, I think. He's the writer of Gone's Ghosts, which is one of the most popular uh, 40k novels, novel series. And he made Legion uh, of the Horus Heresy, which was, uh, it made the Alpha Legion yeah. from, from something like a very obscure into something very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And he also and he made also... Saturnine, so. Oh, Saturnine as well. Horus Rising as well, like mm. the first. Oh, Horus Rising. Yeah. Uh, like if if Good some old. of you, Hor Horus Rising is a great book, and, I've, <laughs> I, I, and also and also a great starting point for uh, if some of you of our three listeners right now are are not into forty k, and if you want like a good sci fi fantasy story that also serves as kind of like a, a good entry point into a Warhammer, like Horus Rising, is a great mm. way to start. I think. Yeah, it is. It's a very good guy. Is, <laughs> are you thinking about the the voice of the guy in the audiobook? <laughs> I am, yeah. So like we, we both of us listened to the audiobook and the it was, this was before they kind of decided on what kind of voice the main prota like the protagonist was gonna have. And <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. The voice of Horus in this book or the guy reading it makes the Horus like he makes him basically so fucking masculine. It's almost to the point of ridicule. I mean, it's it, it is yeah. to the point of ridicule. Uh, yeah. He, I mean, even though he's like a Primarch and he's the first among the Primarchs, and he's like, yeah. And sure, Primarchs are like what four, three and a half meters tall, wearing like four tons worth of power armor, and they're like, they're they're half gods in terms of like yeah. intelligence, Imbued. speed, strength, everything imbued with warp magic you know the... yeah <laughs> they're the progenitors like the the founding fathers of the of the um, space marine legions uh under the emperor but then here's the thing they're also supposed to be like super politicians and super charismatic uh yeah, yeah. But, but but then they're supposed to be like the the ultimate supreme leaders of men that they look to and then he talks like this. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I am Horus. I am the War Master. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and then later, he, he like in the later books, he's just like, ah, politicians? No. He, he becomes more like this kind of like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the later, yeah, in the later books, he's much more mellow. But the first one, it's, yeah. But it's good. I mean, yeah, we yeah. got a good few laughs out of that yeah, yeah. the story itself is still <laughs> absolutely excellent Logan <laughs> would you care to join me in the Marvel oh <laughs> uh, it's yeah. it's like Christian Bale 
trying to do Batman again after 50 years of smoking cigars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's but it's good though. It's good. Yeah. It's just... So well, I think that Dark Tide is um, like pulling it back to to the showcase. Yeah. Um, is one of the most promising titles now on the oh, for sure. uh, coming up. Hundred um, percent. It looks. I mean, like you summarized, it, the um, setting for the game is really, really cool and perfect for for this type of game. I feel. Yeah, and Fat Shark has really cut their teeth on Vermin Tide One and Two, so they. Yeah. So. They know they know how to deliver both gameplay. I mean, they've they've they fucked up with some DLC and stuff, but the core gameplay is still very very solid, polished, and not to mention they're really good with nailing the atmosphere and the look of it. Mm, you know, and the yeah. voice acting, everything they have there is like they they truly they know their things. You know, yeah. they know what makes Warhammer for Kid Warhammer. Um, and just the fact yeah, that they brought so... on Ad Dan Admin already tells me like yeah they they. They know what they're doing. They have my full confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good sign. That's some bringing out the big guns right there. Yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. So after Dark Tide, um, we have a mobile game, which actually the trailer looked almost sick. It I did. Th- look I thought cool. it was like, yeah, I thought it was like some fucking PC game, but. It's like oh. some space marine, some ultramarines fighting, uh, some chaos marine, and uh, yeah, there's a sister there fighting uh, alongside a battle and sister. A battle sister. You want to explain briefly what a TLDR for what the battle sister is? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, they are they are the null uh, genes, right? Yeah. Was it, what's the gene called? Is it the piranha, piranha gene? I don't remember exactly what it, that is, but you know, I mean, the I think they were just like kind of created to be the the religiously fanatical uh, female equivalent of the space marine. Uh, right. I think yeah, you'll have to scratch that because I was thinking about the Silent Sisters. Oh, so, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but no. I just meant yeah. the, the Battle Sisters. This is who's the battle. Adeptus yeah, Sororitas. Right. The Adeptus Sororitas. So, well, basically, the Adeptus Sororitas is a arm of the Inquisition. Uh, they were created, like you said, to be a little bit more like a female space marine, even though they're really their own thing. Yeah. Uh, like everything in 40K, it's very fleshed out and well thought out. So they are much more, <laughs> if it's possible... Um, devote and uh, you know they are much more harsh in their uh, dogma and devotion to the emperor (laughs) yeah and devotion to the emperor so so they are even more religious i mean the space marines are created in the 30k setting to be very secular and logical uh, even though some of them are you know on the border of being religious now (laughs) Uh, <laughs> but but they're not like wholeheartedly hyper religious basically zealous or fanatical which yeah. the battle sisters absolutely are and uh they are like the military arm of the inquisition basically yeah uh yeah so that's uh that's kind of what we see here but uh it looks sick because it's you know, well animated, and we don't really know what kind of gameplay we can expect. But the, but the trailer is cool, and then they slap on the <laughs> the Google Play Store and App Store and stuff, and you're like, okay. Yeah, and then it turns out it is Warhammer 40k Lost Crusade, which is an already released mobile game, which I yeah. think has gotten some some decent reviews and stuff like that. But it's it's like I don't know, mobile games is one thing. Mobile strategy games, it's just like. I just can't get excited for it at all. I'm I'm glad that no. it ha- that it's there, so because it's probably gonna be a good source of income for them. Um, but just nah, man. Just just don't don't tease me. Don't don't agitate the proboscis with this kind of trailer, and then just like no, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was twitching a little bit there, but then mm. it's like trying to 
<laughs> it's like trying to um how to say like watch a tarantino movie and enjoy it um uh, while also having <laughs> been drinking laxatives but just before <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's only so much time. Yeah, at some point you're not gonna enjoy it anymore. That's what. <laughs> no. <sighs> well, but let's just uh, jump to the next game. Yeah. Which is an over-released game. It's Stormground. Yeah, I just think um, Stormground. But well, yeah, what do you think about this game? Did you try it? I did. I played it for quite a bit, actually. Uh, yeah. I I really like this one. You know, I, I guess my expectations were low too, so keep that yeah. in mind. But then, um, so I, I thought for a while that it was going to be almost like mobile gamey and stuff like that. And yeah, this could work on mobile as well. However, it's kind of like, um, if it's kind of like Heroes 3 ish combat in a way, um, uh, mm. that same principle where you have units, you have a hero unit, and then you move in hexes. And hmm. you can also have like some abilities, like kind of like spells ish. And yeah, but the difference is that, all right, so, so right now you have three factions. So you have Stormcast Eternals, which is like the Space Marines of Age of Sigmar. And you have uh, the Night Haunt that we also saw in the VR game. The, yeah. you know, and, and they, they have some interesting things. And then you have the Maggot Kin of Nurgle, which is, <laughs> which is like these, <laughs> like if you took, I don't know, like some the typical barbarians that you see in in like um, the most generic fantasy, but then you just slap them so full of pestilence and plague and disease and like give them an accent and you're good to go. They're really funny yeah. though, and and like when they spawn in, you just like <laughs> you just see this like this like fucking um, pus cyst like this blob of slime just grows or like like this pustule just grows out of the ground and pops into goo and then they spawn in the units <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was a nice thing yeah. yeah yeah so it's a roguelike though i i figured out as well so um the whole because we when we saw the trailer we were worried because you saw like those card pack opening things that's yeah. very mobile gaming but the thing is, the way that works in the game is that um, you go for runs, like as, in, as you do in a roguelike, with like different pathways and stuff, and each one represents a battle with some different objectives or and different enemies. And uh, like I saw some complaints on Steam that oh, you only you have to place the Stormcast Eternals. Like no, that's only for the first twenty minutes. It's literally just a tutorial, and then. Once you've done that, you can play through the story as both um, Maggotkin and Night Haunt as well. Yeah. And <laughs> and then, but the thing is, they have different heroes as well. But then, um, they can be customized. They level up, and they can equip different war gear with different, um, you know, attributes, different play styles, everything. But then instead right. of, but not only do you get war gear yeah. as drops after uh, after after uh, maps but you also get units hmm. and yeah. these units can also be uh <laughs> customized and stuff and uh like you even if let's say you lose the unit uh you don't lose it like from your from your deck you still have it uh, no. used for multiplayer and stuff like that once you've unlocked it and and uh you can if they die you can either spend a miracle to revive them or you can uh, just wait until you get another unit as a drop uh, in the run. And then once you die or like lose the run, you get back to the main menu. But then you can just start another run with uh, the progress on your hero. And you can choose three units that you've acquired and leveled up to bring with you again for the next run. Right, right. So, so three I, of the previous units. Yeah. So I thought this game was like surprisingly addictive to just do the like do one more run, one more run, get some new stuff, yeah. and there's some absolutely bonkers cool stuff you can get in here. Um, so yeah, I, I I had very low expectations, but it turned into a very decent game for me. Hmm. Would you say? I mean, it's gotten a little bit mixed reviews. Yeah. But would you say it's like worth the price though? Yeah. The price is uh, worth it. I mean, if if this was a full price game, I would not pay. I, I would not pay that. 
But of course, your mileage may vary. And I haven't played much of... Um, I haven't played all the factions yet. I've played Maggotkin and I've played uh, Eternals. Yeah. And... Just played Maggotkin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of have to, right? Um, yeah. But, like, I, I see some stuff here that says... Uh, you know, like random crashes, buggy and long animations, buggy sound. And the thing is, I did not experience this. Um, I no. didn't have any problems. Maybe this is dependent on like, you know, different PCs will have different Black problems. problems yeah, probably. Yeah, but I didn't experience any bugs. And uh, gameplay loop too long? I didn't think so. I thought it was a little bit... Um, that's also a preference thing though, right? So yeah. I liked it. A lot because you constantly get rewarded and you get to keep the rewards kind of and um uninspired loot i didn't think so either because i i liked it a lot actually um mm. horrible non-pc friendly ui i don't know man it didn't seem like that for me i didn't have any problems with it so your mileage mm. may vary um at least it is staff approved uh spire yeah. boy certified spire drip does it absolutely it you can Does get, get the, s- <laughs> the spire drift. I mean, that's got to be like you. You can get some absolute fantastic uh, spire drip. You know, yeah, because they drop cosmetics as well, which doesn't. Uh, oh, uh, for all the units actually, for for your individual units, like the small units as well. So nice. Yeah, uh, spire drip is um, confirmed. Good. Okay, so. The next game mm-hmm. is uh, Necromunda. Hired Gun. Hired Gun. And uh, we're going to talk about this more in depth. So we're just going to yeah. go over it briefly. All um, I'd, yeah. All I'll say for me right now is that I, I bought it on Series X. It's unplayable. Um, yeah. Hopefully, they, But the developers are aware of the issue that I'm having. And they are working to fix it. I hope they do soon. Because the the yeah. problem is that the aim sensitivity is completely dog shit, cyber uh, massive yeah. shit. Like it's mm. um, it, it's just important. Like it, it is kind. Of, yeah, you can kind of play it, but it's it's like the aiming is just broken. It it doesn't work right at all, and no. uh, it really took away from what would otherwise be a potentially flawed but interesting game. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're spinning it positively there. Good. But yeah, uh, yeah let's just uh, move on for now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next game on the list is Blood Bowl 3, which is uh, cool. I mean, I never played any Blood Bowl. Same. Um, <laughs> I remember until Bl- Biscuit playing it back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the experience I have with the game. Um, the next game is uh, Battle Sector, mm-hmm. which is much more up my alley. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this? Uh, I mean, I'm always up for more games like this, like the proper serious mm-hmm. uh, strategy, like, uh, you know, tactical strategy kind of games. I'm up for it, for sure. So, yeah, uh, this actually, yeah, this looks uh, really smooth. With the Tyranids and like... Uh, you know I like the hex based <laughs> or like square based tactical positioning. So this is up my alley. Yeah. Do Do you think that uh, is this a game you think you're gonna buy? Uh, yeah, probably. I I can't be sure, you know, because you know kids and all that. Right. Right. Uh, but <laughs> but you know me, I say yeah, that's a definite buy, and then I never buy it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I, I get you though. But for this, I think the 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 price right now is at like two hundred fifty kroners, which is like what twenty five dollars or twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's not definitely... a it's an easy buy in, I think. Mm. Let's see here. Especially on your spire salary. <laughs> um, uh, my spire salary. Are you insinuating that I make a lot of money? I am insinuating I... that you were born and raised in the spire. And, like uh, me, yeah. And we do exploit the lower chaff in the uh, lower hive. I mean, my Gucci servitor is uh, mining Bitcoin right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine how much money you're making if you kind of like own a factory or something. that maybe like 10 million employees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are something like that. And they make, they make just, just enough to live. 
Yeah, yeah. That's basically it. Oh, uh, and that all That's of them a... just like have these desktop setups with GTX nine thousand and forty K, you know. And yeah, just mine and... that Bitcoin. I mean in a in a in a hive the the energy for Bitcoin mining would be people running in like a, on a thread mill or something like that. Just <laughs> kind of you know powering powering the cpus or the gpus rather yeah uh, yeah uh, but i mean just imagine being like a an industrial overlord living in the spires you know and just you know there's no regulation nothing <laughs> you can just pollute all you want and yeah. people die in your factory there's like there's like no consequences i mean the so just, yeah the boss will just not even know about it no, and and if there's like a riot or something, you'll just send like some kind of augmented uh, skitari like uh, unit to deal with it. You know, <laughs> like just just purge that sector. <laughs> I mean, I think um, I I would never want to work there, but I would want to no. live in the spire, blissfully yeah, ignorant. The spire, the spire drip is real. The spire drift is really yeah. <laughs> but yeah, where were we? Um, battle sector, yeah. So this is um, maybe I'll buy it. You know, I'll see. I'll I'll actually consider it. It comes this. out fifteenth of July. So yeah. I mean, I, I I'm pretty sure I'm gonna play this. Uh, it would be really cool if they had uh, some kind of co-op feature and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, kind of battle each other. Yeah, I think that yeah, this is a game that I'll definitely consider. Heavily Ooh. consider. Mm. I mean, this I actually uh, it says face your friends on the battlefield with live Ooh. and asynchronous multiplayer and hot seat modes available. Ooh. There's no excuse not to take your friends to war. I mean, hot seat yeah. that just like screams Heroes Three to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. That's the oh hot seat mode. I mean. Remember, uh, I probably told the story already, but <laughs> I remember like doing a hot seat with maybe like seven uh, <laughs> buddies back in the day. That's when gonna we were take kids. so long. It, it took so long, and there there was so much politics. It was so funny because there were while while the one playing the game was in, uh, you know, by the computer, mm -hmm. we had to lock the door. Uh, to my buddy's uh my buddy's room basically where we played it and everybody else had to go outside and if he engaged someone uh he he got out and like got the one uh you know he was <laughs> engaging in to to play with him uh. and uh there was so much skullduggery and backstabbing and stuff planned on when <laughs> when the guy was inside playing Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, just send me like five thousand gold, and I'll I'll come, you know, crush him for you. Or <laughs> yeah, there was so much like stuff like that. <sighs> it I was mean, good. That, that I would definitely take that offer. Five thousand gold? Yeah, I'm sure that wouldn't disappear into the ether. Yeah, ex exactly. Because that's you know he five thousand gold, and then he bought like a black dragon for that, and kind of killed you with it so it's basically <laughs> double whammy slam. i mean you you can it's a, it's like a social experiment it's you see human nature at yeah. work <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> it's like <laughs> you see the worst in people <laughs> when you play here <laughs> three hot seats <laughs> and and you know a little known fact is that that boy that took the five thousand gold and slapped his friends with the black dragon is is also the guy that would later go on to make bitconnect yeah, 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 right. That's a perfect example. It's uh just take take your money and fucking slay you too. Uh no, but uh back to the the showcase here. Where were we? Yeah. So next up is going to be an Age of Sigmar mobile game. Is it out? Uh, no, an I, auto battler? I don't know. This is just so not off my alley that I'm just like, no, no, no. We're just gonna skip, skip through this. I mean, just cue the. If you like auto battlers, <laughs> cue the next one. Yeah, no, just like cue, cue the, cue the okay meme, and then we move on. Okay, yeah. So mobile game, 
auto battle or whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the next one is uh, an expansion for Warhammer Quest Silver Tower. The expansion uh, is called Shadows Shadows Over Hammer Hall. Yeah. I I don't know. Is it? I'm I'm just like yeah yeah yeah. And it comes to PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is for Steam as well. Yeah. Uh, but this is already out of the Warhammer Quest, right? Is it out on Steam still? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't know. It is. It is. So <laughs> I, mean, I don't really know what this game is all about. Do you? Ah, uh, it's it's kind of like also um kind of like squad tactics uh build up characters yeah. you know with uh i mean that's a theme with warmer games right it's the same it is <laughs> it's so a theme cool. with warmer games uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's like that but then it's also uh kind of like a dungeon crawler and you level up your characters like and this is characters not units by the way and then you um you you get gear you level up you get abilities these kind of things so it's it's a i mean i guess it's a decent game i i think it's similar to death watch as well yeah um i, I as far as mobile games go this is not bad because you you get a yeah. lot for your you, this you actually buy it and then you you get a lot of content just from that so yeah mm. you know um mm-hmm. want to move to the next one <laughs> yeah let's let's move on so the next one is Shooters, Blood and Teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I mean, the 40k verse is so fucking, you know, expansive. There's yeah. so much fun in it. Uh, and this title just, yeah, it's good. It's about time the orcs get some love. Yeah, yeah. You love some orky goodness and, and quirkiness. I mean, the orcs is just so, it's the I think it's my favorite faction, actually. Like the the lore behind the orcs, uh, that they may be created by the old ones to be like the ultimate answer, you know, to any any faction to to be able to kind of defeat any any other faction because they're yeah. basically they're basically impossible to get rid of because they just spread all over the place with their spores. And they will always kind of slowly build up to be become more and more <laughs> advanced and, <laughs> you know, start a wog, which is like a, a cleansing mechanic, you know, just to cleanse out the fucking Necrons or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and they, uh, the, their technology slowly also improves <laughs> with with the size of the wog, you yeah, know, yeah. and the more orcs that believe the technology is going to work, the the more it you know advances, and eventually they get like super luminal travel capabilities <laughs> with like <laughs> bolted on ramshackle craft, <laughs> like put more engines on it, and it'll go faster in the light. Basically, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, you gotta love the orc philosophy. That they're so, uh, it's it's so pure. It is very pure. It's very pure. And it seems that this game is actually made by the, by the creators of Guns Gore and Cannoli, mm. uh, which is also kind of like a, I think it's garnered a lot of um, praise from like in, among the indie games. You know. Yeah. It's a pretty famous one. So. Um, and it's this is also like a running gun platformer, it seems. Yeah. And here also it's like it says, spearhead an orc invasion, destroy the hive city, and kill your war boss. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. And like teeth is uh, you know, the currency of the orcs, you know. Yeah. So that's they're probably gonna collect teeth to yeah. buy better stuff, you know, <laughs> For, buy upgrades and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and it has a co-op as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is uh, looks like a fun, fun like co-op title. Pick up and play, but probably yeah, fast-paced and good. Probably not gonna be that expensive either. So we could play this co-op. I think that would be fun. Let's get Dankian to play with us as well. Yeah, sure. And Dankian will probably whoop our asses. Uh, That's why we play co-op, so we don't have to get embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. So he can be on our team. (laughs) <laughs> okay so the next game is uh, the one we mentioned previously which is battle sister vr yeah 
Um, yes. And you dabbled into this, right? Yeah, I, I've played through it, uh, through the campaign on it, because I, I recently got the Oculus Quest 2, um, which I'm loving, by the way. But then Battle mm -hmm. Sister, the first time I heard about this, that there was a VR warmer game, I was like, what? Why, why didn't I hear about this? And then I saw that the, the reviews back then was not that good. Um, they, it was like a mediocre title and stuff. But then I started reading the reviews on the Oculus Store and other places, which said, like, you know, the trailer is not representative especially the old trailer um uh, yeah. it's not representative of the game at all and you know don't listen this is like well the melee melee is a little bit you know limp the 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 shooting mechanics and everything is quite nice and mm. so i tried it because it wasn't expensive either and dude yeah. like i had a blast with that game just just mm. the fact that like the model, the weapons are modeled so well. The first time I held a bolter in real scale and reloaded it myself manually and all that, like, mm, mm, mm. Mm. fucking it. All the 40k weapons, well, most of the 40k weapons, like the melted gun, the bolt pistol, bolter, power swords, uh, some of the chaos cultists, axes, and like there's like a lot of a bunch of stuff in here and last guns and yeah, and just. That's one thing. Firing all those weapons feels just right. Uh, the last gun is as weak as you would expect. Um, and th But then, here's the other thing. Seeing the Warhammer <laughs> characters and stuff like that, but up to scale. Like, I set my character to be my height, which, which is like 6'4 and 190, yeah. 197. And, uh, like, yeah, I dwarfed the other battle sisters, um, but then I met a Black Templar space marine, <laughs> and he fucking dwarfed the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, we're looking for your friend, right? He's like, yeah, do you know what she looks like? I am assuming she's as short as you. <laughs> just like, hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he got your... Passport stamped. Yeah, <laughs> but trust me, this game. Uh, if you're a warmer fan, it's so and have VR. This is it's such a it's a fun investment, and like it feels so nice when you really nail. Um, you know, like you can just like you just use your power sword and you smite the cultists that charge you, and then you just whip out your bolt pistol and like fire off a, a quick couple of shots to obliterate the people at a range, and you just like do all this really quickly. Um, mm. it, it's, it's really satisfying. I, I enjoyed the hell out of this game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it looks really cool. I mean, if, if I ever get VR, I'll probably buy this one right away, but I, I'm going to make sure you, 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 you can try mine and I'm going to yeah. make sure you try it. I'll, next like, time we hang out or something, I'm going to bring it. Like you need yeah, to try yeah. it. Yeah. Do that. You can do that. Um, okay. So battle sisters, try it. Mm-hmm. Um, or Battle Sister, rather. And then we come to a Warhammer Underworlds, which is an online card game. Yeah. Uh, this looks... It's like a super complicated version of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of any card game. <laughs> or it looks uh, complicated, basically. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, what do you expect from a Warhammer-based card game? I, uh, yeah, I yeah. What do you think? This is no, not for you. No, this is not for me. Uh, no. I'm sure it would be cool to watch someone good at it to play it, but um, I, I just looking at the UI and just like the interface of this just made me in my head shrink back into my body and devolve me as a human being. Yeah, into were... a single-celled <laughs> organism. <laughs> yeah, you were more like, let's, let's get some teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah okay so the, that's not what we uh come here for the last one <laughs> on the list is what we come here for which is um chaos gate demon hunters hey we only got a you know sorry yeah go, just go on what? i just yeah it just the, the 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 first sentence to introduce this game was ready or force halberd yeah, <laughs> which is, if that's not a sexual innuendo, I, don't I mean, it, <laughs> all right. So if you if you ever wonder if your girl is a keeper, if she ever tells you 
Freddy or Four Albert. That's how you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, but it's kind of a short um, teaser, basically. Uh, but we do know a little bit about this because it's um, it's like a iteration or follow up game from an old title, or a, I don't know if it's a new uh, premise or like a touch up. Do you know that? Uh, like this a is remaster. It's not really remaster because this is not the same game. Uh, no. But it says like. It, th this is more like a new title in a franchise. So they're trying right, to make right. uh, Chaos Gate into a franchise, it seems. And then, yeah. So this is yeah, going to be its own it. thing, but probably like an evolved version of the old uh, of the old gameplay, I, I assume. Yeah. Did you play any of the new XCOM games? Speaking of like XCOM style. Oh, I, uh, like uh, Enemy Within and, and, and those? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those. I always yeah because uh, this this is probably gonna be a little bit like that right yeah just with gray knights mm, mm, mm. that's gonna be cool <laughs> yeah that is gonna be cool I I, mean, gray knights has always been one of the coolest sub factions in in 4K right I mean yeah. the ultimate incorruptible holy holier than thou yeah super space marine and like just the fact that these guys are super versions of a normal space marine just like I... yeah, yeah and i kind of love i kind of love more how the gray knights are super over the primaris maybe yeah you know like the way they are super is just because they're they're selected like really 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 few get through the the selection process yeah. and the training is unbearable even like when you're a space marine, I mean, even to become a space marine in the first place is basically winning the lottery, and then you have to win the lottery again to become a gray knight. And yeah. when you're a gray knight, finally, then you're equipped with like the most holy fucking weapons that are, you know, f people sacrifice their lives to make to bless them. <laughs> yeah, to bless them and like you know, holy bolt of rounds and stuff like that. Oh and, yes, yeah. It's just, it's just so elaborate. In order to fight chaos, you need to fucking get the fucking best, you know. Yeah, and I also saw that, like, you know, just to to give a sense of scale, uh, at least to people mm. who who understand the scale. Um, but as far as I I understood, like when when the demon Primarch Angron attacked last time, yeah, uh, it was a hundred gray knights that fended him off. Like among others, but yeah, yeah, and and like the thing, the funny thing is him together with some of the space vault chapter, and the the funny thing is, very few of those gray knights survived, mind you, but they mm -hmm. did, they did manage to fend off and banish a demon primarch. Yeah, which is you know, insane. A primarch in itself is just. You know, a fucking army, one man army, and then you have like a demon blessed, corn blessed Primarch, yeah, <laughs> which I, is, yeah. I, I think a Primarch I mean, would equivalent to like the entire war machine, like the, the the force of the entire gathered war machine of Genghis Khan at his Khan at his peak of military power, like just. More, merge all of that into one person and you have yeah. a prime like i mean uh wasn't it like a titan stepping on angron once and he kind of threw it off or something or he, survived he, at least he held it back like he made the yeah. the uh, and while he was really injured all, also he he just he just like managed to hold the leg back so much that the the hydraulics started to get destroyed inside the robot inside the yeah. titan um and the funny thing here is that this game is written by aaron dembski balden oh which yeah. wrote the book we just referenced ah <laughs> right right yeah full circle baby maybe, that's what we maybe do yeah maybe we get some some balden action in in uh the story here he's one of my 
him and Dan Abnett are my two favorite uh, writers, yeah, and uh, at least among the horror stars, because Balden wrote Betrayer <laughs> and First Heretic, and like some of those really, really good, uh, some of the best her- horror stars books for sure. Yeah. So I think Betrayer is probably my favorite um, out of all of them, maybe alongside oh, the- uh, Saturday Night. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I I really like the first Heretic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. was... But it was a long one. Betrayer. Yeah. That one. Did I read this one? I can't remember. Well, it's the it's the one with Argyll, Tall, and Karn where they have the romance and it's the one where... Uh, where... Okay, right, right. It's the culmination of... Yeah, when, when Lorgar and Angron fuck up the ultramarines at Kalf and it, it leads to... Uh, betrayer is kind of like the the conclusion to that arc i think yeah right 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 it's also yeah it's where angron really shines and goes from just being like a mindless berserker into a really compelling character yeah yeah i think uh but the first heretic is really good yeah i remember uh <laughs> do you remember the the servitor uh thingy that uh, that accompanied the word bearers. Oh, what, uh, what is it called? Uh, Incarnadine. Yeah, oh. that's the name. <laughs> Do you remember Incarnadine? I, I remember the name and, and vaguely that he was like a super badass. Yeah, it's like some kind of uh, because the emperor is basically suspecting Lorgar of being um, like corrupted or not true to his word. Yeah, and Lorgar is one of the primarchs. So yeah, yeah. So he so he sends some uh, custodies uh, to just accompany the legion, you know. Yeah. As you do, and uh, then uh, <laughs> when they discover that, you know, the the entire legion is basically corrupted, uh, they I can't remember. They're they're trying to kill somebody. Yeah, that's yeah. Basically, they're they're trying to raise hell. But in Carnadine, this massive hulking servitor, which is you know being a servitor, you su- you're supposed to not have a personality at all. Yeah. But that it's alluded to in the lore that that servitors are basically they're not really 100% lobotomized. They still retain like a, a small, you know, smidge of of uh, autonomy and uh, and uh, yeah memories, but. Incarnadine is basically uh, you're led to believe that it's really proud of being in the Legion, yeah, and being a part of of this brotherhood, you know, <laughs> <laughs> even though he's a mindless machine, hulking machine with like two giant cannons, yeah, <laughs> and he, he's he's like included in the story. You don't really know why he's included, but when the custodies are trying to let you know create havoc. Uh, he basically defends uh, some some brothers of the Legion uh, with like one line. And he says like, "For the Legion," <laughs> <laughs> because I mean he's going to die. You you know that he's going to be destroyed after that. But he he makes a heroic effort, and I always thought that was so funny that <laughs> they build it up like he he has like some small thoughts and you can kind of see that he's proud and stuff like that <laughs> you know <laughs> to be included in in the battles and oh uh, yeah and then <laughs> then he defends the legion oh uh, it's so grim dark <laughs> yeah and then he gets absolutely obliterated by the custodies <laughs> yeah but he, he to be fair he he does some damage to the one of the custodies i think true true but i mean yeah. like i would never mess with the custodies anyway no 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 with any of them crazy if you do that well that has been it guys i mean that's uh quite the list let me know if you think this was uh, good in the comments uh do you have anything to add steph no i think um i think we're good i just think that like Mm. there's a lot of things to good look forward to there's the streaming service as well which we'll probably get to in another episode and yeah I i think that the the um the mantra for that or like the, the slogan for that warhammer plus is more warhammer more often and i think that is definitely what we're seeing the start of here and i'm mm-hmm. all here for it as long as they because you know with quantity 
comes the chance of quality, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. that is gospel, brother. Amen. So, yep. Remember to stay humid and stay absolutely dang. Mm, goodbye. <laughs>